Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain the 7th and 8th episodes of the South Korean survival drama Squid Game, called VIPs and Frontman. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The last episode ended with Enom and Ali dying while playing against Giyun and Sangwoo, respectively. Ali is put into a coffin by the staff, while the players who won the game are taken back to the room. Deoksu walks into the room first, and is surprised to see Minyo peacefully resting on her bed. She makes fun of him and is proud that she didn't have to play the game, because she didn't get a partner. The most important aim of the game is for it to be fair. Since the doctor's death was the reason she didn't get a partner, Minyo was spared. Now, only 17 players are alive. In another room, the overseer gets a call from the VIPs, informing him that they are about to arrive. After the call, the overseer gets his gun and asks Junho to come out. Junho had accidentally placed the phone on the receiver backwards, giving away his presence. The overseer goes around the room, looking for the intruder, but gets a call in the middle of his search. His staff has found a dead body on the north coast of the island. When he leaves, we see that Junho is hiding behind the shelves. Meanwhile, all the players are distressed because of the last game. All of them have become responsible for the death of someone they were close to. Sang Wu, however, tells Giyun not to think about it too much, because the old man was only a stranger who he had known for a few days. One of the players had come to the facility with his wife. Both of them were together in the last game, and his wife was killed because of him. He loses control and asks everyone to stop this madness by voting against the last two games. Sang Wu opposes and argues that the money is worth the lives of everyone who died, and they cannot give it up now. He even tells the man that if he feels so guilty, he should have died in his wife's place. Sang Wu has already shown his ruthless side by tricking Ali into dying, but now Gi Yun starts to realize just how greedy his friend is. Elsewhere, the overseer goes to see the body of the person Jun Ho had thrown into the sea when he first came to the island. They find Jun Ho's ID in the man's pocket and assume that he is the police officer, but the overseer's demeanor changes when he sees the ID. Just then, he gets a call saying that the VIPs have arrived. The overseer quickly goes to meet his boss, who is the main man and the organizer of the games. He takes off his golden bedazzled animal mask and asks the overseer to receive the VIPs because he doesn't want to be the one to welcome them. The VIPs turn out to be some rich foreigners who bet on the players' lives the same way people do with horses. They are received by the overseer, who apologizes on behalf of the organizer and takes them to their exclusive lounge. Meanwhile, in the room, no one sleeps at night for fear of being killed. The man whose wife died is filled with unbearable guilt. He remembers Sang Wu telling him to die and ties the bedsheet around his neck. The man finally hangs himself off the bunk bed. One of the VIPs sees this in the surveillance footage and gets annoyed because he had bet $1 million on that man. The others laugh it off showing that money is the least of their problems, and they do this for fun. Simultaneously, Jun Ho abducts a waiter, appointed to serve the VIPs with drinks. He changes his clothes and disguises himself as the waiter after killing him. He also places his cell phone up his sleeve to record everything he sees. Meanwhile, the players are woken up by an alarm and see a coffin being brought inside. They finally see that the man has hung himself. Before they can comprehend what happened, they are called for the fifth game. The VIPs rest in the lavish lounge while watching the players and deciding who they should bet on. Jun Ho enters the place and a perverted VIP's eyes land on him. He calls Jun Ho near and asks him to stay nearby. This time, the players are brought to the empty white room again, but this time, it has 16 mannequins placed in front of them, each wearing a number. They are told to choose one randomly. Everyone tries going for the middle ones because being at the front or back is risky. Before gi -yoon can choose one, only the first and last ones are left. gi -yoon reasons that if he goes first, he might have more time left and a better chance at winning. He's about to take the first one when another player asks him if he can have it instead. gi -yoon accepts and takes the very last one. They are then brought to the place where they will be playing the game. It has a bridge composed of many panels of glass, which they are supposed to cross. But some of the glass is tempered, so it will break when the player steps on it, making the person fall to their death. The man who took the first place has to go first, and therefore has a very low chance of winning. The person in first accepts his fate and moves forward, but falls to his doom with his second jump. Similarly, the second man jumps quickly over the first few glasses, but eventually falls. After some time, it is the priest's turn to move forward. 
He starts praying to God instead of moving, angering the people behind him. The person right behind him tries to push him off, but instead falls off the glass himself. The priest thanks God for saving him, only to be pushed by the person behind him. Sang Wu is nervous because they are taking a lot of time to cross, which might cause him, Saibyok, and gi -yoon to not get there in time. Eventually, the person before Deoxu falls off, leaving him in the front. Deoxu is too scared to move ahead himself, so he tells his minion behind him to go forward. The man, however, doesn't agree, saying that this is a matter of life and death. Meanwhile, the VIP who is attracted to Jun Ho now asks him to sit down beside him. He flirts with Jun Ho and asks him to take the mask off. Jun Ho knows if he takes it off, his secret will be revealed, but the VIP insists. With no way out, he asks the man to come to the other room where they can have some privacy. The man totally ignores the game and goes to the other room with Jun Ho. He then takes off his robe and stands naked in front of Jun Ho, expecting sexual favors from him. Jun Ho, however, gets his gun out and threatens the man to take his mask off. He turns out to be a wealthy, middle-aged American man. Jun Ho starts recording a video, telling the man to reveal everything he knows about the game. Back in the game, Min Yo pushes Deoxu's minion off the glass and takes his place. She and Deoxu throw insults at each other before she agrees to go before him. She doesn't want him to waste her time because only three minutes are left. She asks him to move and steps on his glass, but instead of moving forward, takes a tight hold of him. Min Yo reminds Deoxu of when she threatened to kill him if he ever betrayed her. Deoxu tries to get her off of him, but he cannot make a lot of movement on the glass. At last, she deliberately falls off the bridge, taking Deoxu with her. Now, only four of the players are left. gi -yoon at the end, then Saibyok, sang -woo, and at the front is an old man who claims to be a glassmaker with 30 years of experience. The man can tell the difference between the two types of glass by observing the way the light reflects off of them. He easily passes the first few glasses, taking the group closer to victory. But the VIPs realize he can tell the glasses apart, and the overseer turns the lights off. He is now at the last glass but cannot tell which is tempered. When he takes too much time, Sang Wu takes the matter into his own hands and pushes the man to the glass in front of him. The glass breaks, and Sang Wu easily steps onto another one and wins the round. Saibyok and Giyun do the same and pass at the last second. A charge is detonated, and the remaining glass explodes, injuring the winners as well. Sang Wu and Giyun get minor cuts, but Saibyok is gravely injured. Meanwhile, the overseer asks a staff member to see what is going on with the VIP and the waiter, but they find both of them missing. The staff also find one oxygen tank missing, indicating that the intruder has escaped. The overseer gets on a boat himself to go on a search for him. Sang Wu, Saibyok, and gi -yoon are the only three left out of the 456 players who first arrived. They are taken back to the room where gi -yoon belittles Sang Wu for killing the man when they could have all made it through. Sang Wu, in turn, tells him to be grateful that he was there to do the dirty work for him. He calls gi -yoon an idiot who doesn't know how real life works. Saibyok, on the other hand, stays on the bed, holding her sides. As the two fight, the staff come into the room and congratulate them for getting through the five rounds and finally making it to the sixth. They hand the players one box each and invite them somewhere special. Saibyok goes to the washroom and takes her clothes off to reveal a shard of glass protruding from her abdomen. She painfully takes it out and bandages the wound with her shirt. The box given by the staff has fancy clothes inside, which the players are supposed to wear. The players are then brought to a triangular dining table and given a lavish feast. The guys devour it completely, but Saibyok barely even touches the food because of her injury. After they are done, the staff take their utensils away, but leave them with a knife. Meanwhile, Jun Ho is on the run from the overseer and ends up on another side of the island. His phone finally gets reception, and he sends his superior the pictures he had taken in the facility. But before he can run away, the staff and the overseer catch up to him. Now, he lies in between the staff and a cliff and has no way out of the situation. The overseer asks him to drop his gun, but Jun Ho stays put. The overseer doesn't back off either. Instead, he moves towards the policeman, which makes Jun Ho shoot him in his shoulder. At that moment, the overseer finally takes his mask off. Looking at his face, Jun Ho freezes in shock. The overseer is Jun Ho's brother, In Ho, the man Jun Ho has been looking for all this time. In Ho points his gun at his little brother and reluctantly shoots him. Jun Ho falls into the sea and dies. Back in the facility, the trio comes back to the room and each stays in their respective corner, as far away from each other as possible. Gi Yoon approaches Saibyok and asks her if she is okay. 
Sabiak points her knife at him at first, but puts it away when he says he isn't there to hurt her. Giyun asks her to work together with him in the following round because he doesn't trust Sang Wu anymore. Saibyak, still in pain, asks him what he will do if he wins the money. Giyun says he will pay off his debts, treat his mother, and be a good father to his daughter. Saibyak tells him about her own brother. The two make a promise to take care of one another's families if they win the money. Then, Giyun sees Sang Wu falling asleep on his bed. He moves towards him with his knife. But Saibyak stops him, saying that they should not be reduced to his level. Just then, Giyun notices Saibyak's injury. She is bleeding profusely through her shirt. Giyun freaks out and starts yelling at the staff to come in and save her. As he bangs on the door, some staff come in, but they have a coffin with them. Giyun looks back at Saibyak, only to find Sang Wu standing over her with his knife. He had stabbed her to death while Giyun was begging the staff to save her. Giyun loses control and shakes Saibyak's limp body, trying to wake her. He attacks Sang Wu in a fit of rage, but is stopped by the guard. Eventually, they take Saibyak's body away and burn it in the furnace. The two final contestants of the game are Giyun and Sang Wu. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.